the seasons have changed wherever you are in the world. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Earth has spun its way into autumn. In the Southern Hemisphere, you are now in the beginning of spring. If you live somewhere close to the middle of those two, you might not have noticed a dramatic change. The difference between the longest day and the shortest day in Barbados is two minutes. But the seasons have changed wherever you are. The earth has moved around the sun just a little bit. And things have changed with that. I'm a big fan of Matthew Fox's spiritual path called creation, spirituality. He is a priest. And in the early iteration of creation spirituality, Fox looked at the seasons, at least the seasons as they are at particular latitudes of the earth, the cycles of the earth and tied them to spiritual pathways, to spiritual tasks that are before us, all of which are necessary. He's untied them from the seasons, realizing that different people around the world experience those seasons differently. And yet here in New York, here in the northeastern part of North America, we are entering fall and about to witness the transformation of the earth before us. And so I think it is fitting as we, at least here, enter fall to think about the spiritual tasks of what Fox calls the via transformativa, the transformative path. The tasks before us are transformation. But what does that mean? What does that mean? The caterpillar transforms. Certainly the caterpillar becomes a chrysalis. The chrysalis, from the chrysalis emerges a butterfly. It is a miraculous metamorphosis and transformation. It is spectacular, so spectacular that it is used again and again in metaphor in religious community. The deciduous tree leaves in my part of the world turn blazing, beautiful, bright colors before falling to the earth and being returned to the soil. Transformation is happening all around us in nature. And transformation is happening within our religious community as well. What are the spiritual tasks of transformation? And what does that mean? Now, it is true it is true that we are changed by being in community with one another. We are changed by learning from one another, by interacting with one another, by having compassion for one another in our times of sorrow, by celebrating with one another in our times of joy. These things change us in fundamental and beneficial ways. We are changed when we interact, when we form real relationships with one another. But transformation is more than just change. The caterpillar doesn't merely become a different colored caterpillar. It transforms into a butterfly. The caterpillar goes into that chrysalis. And as the video suggests, liquefies into a puddle of goo. It was long thought, long thought that that liquid inside the chrysalis was unstructured and unordered, that somehow, somehow by some miraculous workings of nature, that goo turned into a butterfly. It was thought this because people cut open chrysalises and all they found was goo. And then they looked more deeply. They looked at what was actually happening. And they found, they found that there is an intricate structure even within the chrysalis. They found that butterflies 
retain memories, memories imparted to them when they were caterpillars, memories of sense are retained through that metamorphosis, which means, which means that some pathways do not dissolve. Some connections do not dissolve when they are restructured into becoming a butterfly. I am always captured by the fact that the chrysalis is inside of the caterpillar. It is not something the caterpillar spins around itself. It emerges from the caterpillar and then the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis. The more they are studied, the more we understand that the butterfly in some essence has been inside the caterpillar all along. Just last week, my eight-year-old daughter brought home from school a book that had captured her imagination, a book from her classroom shelves that she begged the teacher to be able to bring home so she could read it again and again. She fell so in love with this book that um, my mother bought her a copy of it so that she could have her very own copy so that the teacher could have the classroom copy back. The book was simply entitled, Why Do Leaves Change Color? It's a complicated book for an eight-year-old filled with words like chlorophyll and photosynthesis and pigments, but she, ke she keeps reading it. She reads it again and again, and each time she absorbs a little more, and the essence of that book, I am reminded, as many of you already know, is that the transformation of leaves in autumn is the breakdown of the green pigment that has been hiding all of the other colors all along. That red, that yellow, that orange, those beautiful vibrant colors that blanket mountains and hillsides for the fall in the parts of the world where I live, those colors have been there all along, created by the trees when they made their leaves in the spring. Those colors were there and the transformation of autumn unveils them. And so what is this work of transformation that we are involved with in religious community? Mark Morrison Reed reminds us that the central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind each to all. The transformation that we are asked to undergo by being members of a faith community together, by being bound in covenant together, by being held to relationship together, by doing the work of repairing and healing the broken places in our relationships and in our society, that work, that work, that transformative work is meant to unveil what has been there all along, to make plain to us our connection to one another all across the globe, to all beings in the interdependent web of existence, to our mother, the earth. Those connections are already there. And the transformative work that we are called to do in religious community is to unveil those bonds. Mark Morrison Reed continues that once the connectedness is felt, it inspires us, necessarily inspires us to act for justice. Once I understand that my fate is bound up with yours, I am called to act for justice for you in this world. And the reverse is also true. Matthew Fox talks about the Via Transformativa in his creative creation, spirituality, philosophy, theology. He writes, the Via Transformativa is the fourth path. It comes after the positive and negative, the 
the growth of summer and the absence of winter, and it comes after the creative path of spring. And he writes that creativity in and of itself is morally neutral. I mean, he continues, it's creative to make bombs, I guess. So creativity itself needs a critique. It needs a steering and a direction. And that direction, he concludes, is justice. That direction is compassion. The transformative spiritual pathway unveils the bonds that bind each to all so that in our work of creation, in our work of abundance, in our work of emptiness, we also have the work of justice. In the individual transformation made possible through practice and grace, we find transform transformation. In the relief of suffering, in the combating of injustice, and in the celebration that happens when persons struggling for justice and trying to live in mutual respect come together to praise and give thanks for the gift of life, we have transformation. This from Fox's own website. The spiritual task before us in this season, wherever you are in the planet, whatever your weather is like, however long your days are, whether it is getting cooler or warmer or staying exactly the same from day to day, the spiritual task of this season is the task of transformation, the task of unveiling what we already know is there, a connectedness, an interdependence that, that calls us to act for justice, that calls us to act for the liberation of all people. You, my friends, are connected to over 1,300 Unitarian Universalists who are incarcerated in prisons all around the United States. You are connected because you are here at the Church of the Larger Fellowship and they are members of the Church of the Larger Fellowship. That connection could not be more plain. We unveil that connection again and again because it calls all of us to work for the abolition of prisons, to set our people free to tear down the walls and the bars that are holding them captive. We are connected to them and thus we are called to create justice. And when we understand that, when we internalize that, when, when we truly understand that, we are transformed by it. This is the season of transformation. If you live in a place where the leaves are about to change color, notice that they are unveiling themselves to you. They are unveiling what has been there all along to you. If you live in a place where butterflies and caterpillars are engaged in the dance of creation and transformation, pay attention to them. When you see a caterpillar crawling across a leaf, see the butterfly that is already inside of it. It is already taking form inside that wiggly eating machine. And know that just as it is capable of transforming into what it has inside of itself, so are we. We are capable of transforming ourselves, our community, and all of our society in the name of justice and in the name of compassion. Let us transform together. Blessed be.